Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm gonna to react to what if the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs hit Earth today? Now this is gonna be fascinating because it's something that I've actually thought about. Like, do we have the technology to either destroy this asteroid or maybe divert it on a different uh, trajectory? You know, I suspect that we we might be able to maybe divert it, but if we try to destroy it, let's say we try to nuke it, surely the fallout from the from the radiation would be something we'd have to deal with. So yeah, this video should be really interesting. So let's do it. This video was made possible by Curiosity Stream. When you sign up at the link in the description, you'll also get access to Nebula, the streaming video platform that Real Life Lore is a part of. Back in 2013, the world was exposed to two near catastrophes. Really? The Harlem Shake memes and a meteor that hit Russia. The meteor was a big 20 meter wide rock that weighed the same as the Eiffel Tower and it what? just so happened to blow up in the air above the Russian city of Chelyabinsk. Home to over 1 million people and most of whom had dash cams that caught some pretty Whoa. awesome footage. The asteroid blew up with the force of roughly 26 Hiroshima scale atomic bombs, damaged over 7,000 and buildings and sent roughly 1,500 people to seek medical attention for their injuries. Wow. It's believed that an asteroid of this size and power randomly hits the Earth somewhere about once every 60 or so years. Oh. And while they usually hit places where nobody lives like the Earth- 20 meters? 20 meters wide? That's a big rock, man. That's like the size of this house, maybe. 20 meters wide? oceans, they inevitably will sometimes hit a city with over a million people, like this one did in Chelyabinsk. While that does sound kind of bad, Earth has been absolutely slammed by some much bigger rocks in the past. One of them was so bad that it nearly killed every single living thing on the planet, and like a weird sort of balance patch, it reduced the dinosaurs down to chickens, and it set up the world for mammals like us to take over. And now we are the ones who eat the chickens. Crazy. This was the asteroid that hit the Earth roughly 66 million years ago. So long ago now that it's difficult to even find traces of its effects. So just for fun, what would happen if that same asteroid hit the Earth in the exact same location today. What would happen and would we all basically just die? For starters, the dino-killing asteroid was an absolute unit, believed to be somewhere between 11 and 15 kilometers wide. Whoa! Kilometers wide. That is huge. Huge. That is a lot bigger than Mount Everest, and it weighed a lot more, too. Imagine just for a moment Mount Everest flying directly at your city at 40,000 miles per hour. You know the damage it'll cause is gonna be pretty spectacular, and you also know that you're gonna die. But what you might not realize is just how absurd the damage and the overkill is actually going to be. As it's flying through the sky and burning up, the asteroid appears to you helplessly watching below as being brighter than the sun before it finally smashes into the ground and unleashes an amount of energy that's roughly equivalent to 100 trillion tons of TNT. That is over 1 billion times more powerful than the atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. If you Madness. were located anywhere near enough to see that fireball in the sky before it hit the ground, you would now be dead within just a matter of seconds. Any living thing located within a 1,000 kilometer radius of the impact area would be vaporized almost immediately within seconds. If the asteroid hit Manhattan, then everything stretching out to Halifax, Indianapolis, and Charleston would be instantly annihilated the thing that i you know i uh i question is how the asteroid even though it's a huge mass a huge you know traveling a huge velocity how does it affect the whole planet like unless it just the ripple effect just just goes around the globe because yeah you know it's going to destroy a lot of the nearby area but how does it destroy you know, like how did it get rid of all of the dinosaurs? Because the, surely there were dinosaurs on every continent, unless all the continents were connected at that time. And for a European perspective, if the asteroid hit the center of London, it would instantly annihilate every living thing inside of the UK, Ireland, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Switzerland, Germany, and Denmark. 
plants, trees, and grass would spontaneously burst into flames thousands of kilometers away from the crash site due to the absurd levels of heat. Wildfires would almost immediately rage across the entire continent of the impact site. At the epicenter of the impact itself, the asteroid would have punched a massive and deep hole into the surface of the planet, 150 kilometers wide and an unbelievable 20 kilometers deep. That hole would be bigger than the big island of Hawaii and deep enough to contain Mount Everest, with another Mount Everest stacked on top, and with three Burj Khalifas stacked on top of that. It's, uh... No bunker anywhere on Earth would be capable of protecting you from that kind of overkill. On the lower end of the guesstimations from scientists that I've read, the impact would have generated a 10.1 on the Richter scale, which is more powerful than every single earthquake that's taken place on the entire planet in the past 160 years. Roughly 8 minutes after the impact, the massive amount of vaporized rock would begin raining back down onto the planet in the form of hot ash and soot that would bury the surface and ignite even more wildfires. Roughly 45 minutes post-impact, a sudden roar of wind would blast through the region around the impact area at over 600 miles per hour, which would scatter debris around and absolutely flatten any structure or tree that was still standing. If the asteroid hit North America again like it did 66 million years ago, then the entire continent would basically be destroyed and on fire, and all within just the first day. The chain of events set into motion from the impact, however, would probably come close to wiping out life everywhere else too. What? The shockwave from the impact would most likely generate a civilization ending tsunami at least 300 meters tall that would sweep across the land that was already burning, on fire, and choking on ash, and where there's probably a big hole in the ground. It's basically an apocalypse buffet at this point, but there's still a lot more left to be served up. The enormous amount of ash and ejecta pumped into the atmosphere from the crash would shroud the continent of impact in total darkness for some time, and plunge the entire world into a permanent haze that would resemble a twilight for around three years. Whoa, three years. And obviously all of this darkness is going to affect, you know, sunlight being able to, to get to get through, therefore affecting food, plants, crops. Okay, I'm starting to see how, yeah, the dinosaurs were killed off. Photosynthesis in plants and plankton across the world would be severely restricted, and most plants would likely die out over the course of those three years. Animals that rely on eating plants would then, in turn, die out. And animals that rely on eating those animals would ultimately, too, eventually die out. Just like what happened last time. A complete and total ecological collapse around the world would take place. And if it was just as bad as the last time around, it would mean that roughly 70% of all life on the planet would be eliminated. Acid rain would fall across the globe. The ocean's acidity levels would rapidly increase, but the big thing that most life would struggle with would be the unbelievable climate change. Because of all the ash and ejecta that was pumped into the atmosphere from the crash, the Earth would enter into a deep, years-long nuclear winter, where temperatures around the world would be freezing without any other seasons. Earth would enter into essentially a long Game of Thrones-style winter for years, but after that, the planet would flip and rapidly heat up in a surprise global warming event just waiting around the corner. Because of all the huge forest fires raging on a continent or even global scale, unbelievable amounts of gases would be pumped into the atmosphere. According to one estimation, as much as 10,000 billion tons of CO2, 100 billion tons of carbon monoxide, and 100 billion more tons of methane would be unleashed into the atmosphere as a result of the catastrophe. A double whammy of a several years long winter, followed by an extremely hot, years long summer, would probably prove to be too much for most life on the planet to endure and adapt to, just like it was last time. But if there's anything to learn from the last time, Time. That is just so unbelievable. Like, it's an actual dinosaur skeleton. Oh, man. I, I do wish that, you know, I know Jurassic Park went wrong, but like, if we could bring a couple of them back just to see what they would look like, wouldn't that be cool? <laughs>
and this happened, it's that Earth is much more resilient than we are. A disaster of this magnitude sounds like it would be the end of the world, but it really wouldn't be. It would be the end of our experience on the world, but it wouldn't be the end of the world itself. For that, it would have to take something a lot bigger and a lot scarier. Thankfully, a giant Earth-eating asteroid like this one hasn't been detected yet, so there's no real big reason to be scared. But one thing that definitely does scare me and keeps me up at night is the inherently unstable nature of every existing video platform that disincentivizes fun experimentation. I won't be surprised if- Absolutely fascinating. Just, uh, the, just the chain of events that followed the, uh, the actual asteroid landing on Earth. I completely underestimated the effects. I thought that, yeah, the asteroid would smash into the Earth, and then, you know, there, there might be some earthquakes, but then that would be it. But yeah, it was uh, the nuclear winter for sure. It would be the worst part of all of this. But uh, yeah, hopefully we don't find one of those asteroids heading our way anytime soon. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.